Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of All India Limited, hosted by Antic Stock Broking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vadarajan Shiva Shankaran from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome all the participants and the management of Oil India Limited, represented by Sri Harish Madhav, Director of Finance, Sri Pankaj Kumar Goswami, Director of Operations. Dr. Manas Kumar Sharma, Director E&D, and Ankit and Mr. Trisonko to this call. I would like to uh, request Mr. Harish Madhav to give an initial remark, and then we can move on to Q&A. Over to you, Mr. Harish Madhav. Thank you, Mr. Varadarajan. Thank you for the hosting the conference call for first quarter results of Ordinary Limited. Thank you so much. And uh, we welcome all the so Sorry to interrupt you, sir. <clears throat> so sorry to interrupt you. May I request you to come a little closer to the phone, please? Okay, okay. Yeah, I just said uh, thank you, Mr. Varadarajan, for uh, posting this uh, conference call with all investors and analysts. Thank you, Antic Booking. And uh, I also welcome and thank you all the analysts and investors who have joined our call for Q1 results. So uh, let me just introduce uh, our, along with me is today, is, uh, Mr. Varad Rajas, that is Director of Operations, Mr. Pankaj Goswami. Dr. Manas Sharma somehow could not make it because he is a little unwell today. So he is not on the call. We have our Executive Director of Finance, Sri Sanjay Chaudhary, and other officers also with us. So I will request Mr. Sanjay Chaudhary to give a brief on the results of our first quarter, and then we can open for the question. Good morning, our friends from the analysts and the industry fraternity. At the outset, I would like to thank Mr. Zanti Group in Limited for hosting today's earning call of the company. The, the company's financial results for Q1 FI23 were published yesterday and now uh, briefly gives some indications about the performance of the company, both in physical and financial terms. First, to start with the consolidated turnover of the company, for Q1 FY23, since it is 11,566 crores versus it is 6,201 crores for the corresponding quarter of last year. The consolidated profit before tax for Q1 FY23 is rupees 4,333 crores versus 1,678 crores for Q1 FY22. The profit after tax at the group level of the company for Q1 FY23 is 3230 crores versus 1214 crores for Q1 FY22. Now coming to the channel results and dealing with the production front, the crude oil production for Q1 FY23 is 0.779 million metric tons versus 0.748 million metric tons of production in Q4 of FY22. The production in Q1 FI 22% was the same figure, indicating an increase of 4.14% over the corresponding period last year. Natural gas production for Q1 FI 23 is 771 million standard cubic meters versus 734 million standard cubic meters sequentially in Q4 of FI 22, which is an increase of 5.04%. If we compare the production to the corresponding quarter last year, the increase is by 8.44%. On the financial side, the company's profit after tax in Q1 FI23 has increased by 206.23%, to rupees 1,555 crores, versus rupees 507 crores in the first quarter last year. The company's debit in Q1 FI23 is rupees 2698.67 crores, versus 1296.92 crores in Q1 of FY22. The EPS has increased to Rs. 14.34 per share 
in, in the first quarter of FY23 as compared to the corresponding quarter of last year, where it was four, rupees 4.68 per share. The average Google price elevation for the first quarter of FY23 has increased by 67.88 percent to USD 112.73, that is USD 112.73 dollars per barrel versus 67.15 dollar per barrel in the first quarter of last year. The average natural gas price for first quarter of FY23 has increased by 4.31 dollars per MMBTU to 6.10 dollars per MMBTU. This is against 1.79 USD per MMBTU in the first quarter of the last year. We would also like to inform you that I has taken a provision and write up against wealth of rupees 270.73 crores in Q1 or FI23 uh, versus 6.22 crores during the same period last year. A snapshot of the performance of NRL, profit after tax of NRL for Q1 FI23 is rupees 1406 crores against rupees 678 crores in Q1 of FI22. And our gross refining margin has improved to $36.66 dollars per barrel in the first quarter of FY23 from $5.21 dollars per barrel in the first quarter of last year. The EPS of NRL is rupees 19.12 per share in this quarter of FY23 versus 9.22 per share in the first quarter of FY22. With these opening remarks uh, on the performance, we are now open to any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prabal Sen from ICIC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. Uh, first question was uh, with respect to the new the additional duty that has been imposed that doesn't reflect obviously in the net realization uh, is that sitting in the other expense head or is it sitting in the statutory duties sir, in the PNL? The, the uh, this additional expense duty is applicable from first of yes. July. So oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Right. Thank you. Only after 30th of June. Okay. Uh, uh, and subsequently, they become part of the duties. Sorry about that. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, second question was with respect to the form part of the duties and taxes. Duties and taxes. Got it. Got it. So the second question was with respect to NRL. Uh, just wanted to clarify. You mentioned it's thirty six point six six dollars a barrel this quarter, but the Q one number you mentioned five point two one. Is that no, no, yeah, that, yeah, you got it right. What I'm saying is that 36, this is for this year, 36, and the, uh, and the other number uh, was for last year. Okay, just remember. So this, uh, what was 5.21 dollars for for the corresponding quarter last year? Okay, including the excise duty benefit last year, it was only 5.21 dollars, is it? Both are excluding excise duty benefit. Sorry, sir. Both these, GRM, both these GRMs which we have quoted are excluding the excise duty benefit. This is the core GRM. So thirty-six dollars is the core GRM that has been reported this quarter. Yes. 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 Oh wow. Okay. 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 Great. Last question, sir. Just some uh, guidance on overall, given that production has picked up for us. Just some color on FI 23-24 production guidance and capex guidance, if you can give. Thank you, sir. Uh, capex, we have this uh, this year total uh, uh, capex outlay of about 4,300 crores, and in the past quarter, it's I think uh, about 1,200 crores we have already invested. And for production guidance, as uh, our director of operations will uh, just uh, sure. Good morning. Uh, 
Yeah. So for production this year, we are targeting, we are expecting that we will be getting around 3.2, corresponding to 2.9 last year. So we will be getting 3.2 this year. So that is the production target as of now. And as of now, with the present production rate, with the increase in the production compared to the last quarter, we are expecting that we will be able to achieve that. Sorry, sir, this 3.2, you talked about oil target? Crude oil, crude oil production, yes. And what about and gas, sir? Gas also, in gas also, we are expecting similar number, 3.2, around 3.2 BPM. Okay. This is for FI23, right? Yes, yes. All right, sir. I have more questions, but I'll come back in the queue. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Tiwari from Yes Security. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thanks uh, for the opportunity. Um, so my question is uh, again related to production only. So in the analyst meet, uh, you had guided for incremental 1 million ton of production uh, in uh, about next two or three years. So uh, where are we like, you know, with respect to that uh, guidance right now? And uh, are we still holding on to that guidance? And if you can also help us understand that how that production would come. So that would be my first question. And my second question would be around the reserve numbers. So if you look at our crude oil reserves, uh, they've been uh, like, you know, they've fallen over the last decade or so. So where do we see uh, like, you know, reserves uh, in about next five or 10 years? And, and uh, like, you know, if, if suppose the reserve base doesn't grow, so then what is the timeline that we are looking at, like, you know, where probably, like, you know, uh, we would have monetized uh, most of the monetizable reserves that we have. So that would be my two questions. Yeah, first question, you are mentioning about our target for 4.0 in 24-25. So accordingly, we had a plan to go, like, uh, this year 3.2, next year 3.6, and next year 4.1. So that is the target as of now. So uh, as I said earlier, we are in the in line with the production target. Uh, we are expecting 3.2 this year, and subsequently in the next coming years, we'll be increasing production. And your second part of the question that uh, where from this production will come from? Basically, we are targeting our own operating areas as of now. So that is uh, we have identified five trust areas within the within our field, existing field. And with that, uh, we are expecting we are accelerating the drilling activities in those areas and we are expecting that we will be getting more production from that. That is the target. Regarding reserve, as of now, uh, in each, uh, you can say that uh, the reserve, uh, the replacement ratio is always one plus for Oil India Limited. That means we are always growing company. And at the same time, we have uh, already acquired um, 25 numbers of OLP blocks. Where we are yet to assist any results in now, the seismic activities, exploration activities are going on. Then uh, we have identified few locations in those areas. We will be drilling in the next year. And uh, with that drilling, we will be able to establish new results. That is what we are looking for. That is the growth plan for the company. Uh, fair, fair enough, sir. Uh, just like, you know, I just wanted to clarify on that only. So uh, as you mentioned that our visual replacement ratio is more than one. So does that include uh, natural gas as well? Are we talking about combined reserve or uh, like you know, we are talking about crude reserve? Because when I look at crude reserves, they have certainly come down over last 10 decades. No, sorry, last decade. Uh, so that certainly doesn't look like more than one reserve, reserve replacement. It's a combined one. More than one reserve no. number for has just quoted is, is a combined reserve. Mm -hmm. has come down, but then there is a conversion from 3 CP to 2P to 1P, which is uh, regularly happening. Mm -hmm. Our uh, reserve versus production, uh, I think we have been consistently maintaining our reserve production of almost 10 years production equivalent reserve for crude oil and natural gas more than 20 years. And that is the status as of today also. And right. uh, Dr. Aprisha just mentioned that uh, after the new exploration that we are doing in our nomination areas, as well as the new uh, OLP box that we have acquired, we expect to add more uh, reserves subject to of course discovery. And uh, with that uh, reserve uh, versus production balance, that will continue to be maintained in a good form. Fair enough. So, sir, uh, lastly, uh, if I may ask, so uh, uh, in terms of natural gas, what is the peak production that we can hit uh, in case in terms of natural gas uh, Keeping in perspective the kind of demand that exists in Northeast and like you know 
the amount of gas we'll be able to take out of the northeast in the pipeline connectivity gets uh yeah, they get so what is the peak production we could look at because of the target is 5 bcm okay. so that we are expecting uh, now but uh, we have uh, built up our infrastructure so that we can handle up to 7 bcm so okay. the uh, that will be subject to uh, production from the new reserves so we have built up our capacity like that but the production target gas production target if you talk about that is the 5 bcm as of now So, what is the time frame for this five BCM? Twenty-four, twenty-five. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. I'll get back to you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, the first one is uh, relating to the windfall tax. So, so uh, can you give us some sense on what exactly is the formula which the government Uh, the uh, the windfall tax basically what we have seen from the three circulars that have come till now is that they are going going to be reviewed every every fortnight and and after fortnight review uh, the amount of FED is going to be decided so starting from twenty six thousand two hundred fifty is going to be twenty six thousand five hundred now so uh, what we expect is that every fortnight will, uh, the the FED will be declared. and accordingly uh, we will be paying the taxes on that however uh, we have observed one thing is that even after the windfall tax the company has a net realization in excess of about 25 dollars per barrel which is actually much higher than any time that any realization any time in the past if you keep aside the realization that we had last year uh, right no but i wanted to know that they are are they looking i mean uh, I mean, it is like they have got some net realization for the companies in mind, right? Is that the way they are looking into it? I wanted to know the, I mean, the formula. If there is a formula which you are aware of, of course, like it is no, the ministry's formula. Not aware of any formula. This is the numbers which have been declared, and there is no formula which uh, we are aware of. How this has been calculated? That, of course, we don't. Okay, so secondly, uh, uh, I mean, part of this question itself, uh, what is the? Uh, I mean, would you be like netting this uh, windfall tax uh, off from the crude oil revenue and then be calculating royalty and cess, or would it be like uh, a direct impact on the statutory levies? Uh, as uh, if you set up against the cess, yes, but uh, about royalty, we are not so sure. We are examining the matter. And we have not really been able to contribute as far as royalty is concerned, but this will be a set of arrangements. Okay, so you are saying that we have to take the naturalisation, then reduce the twenty-five uh, thirty dollars uh, impact, and then calculate like twenty uh, percent cess on that. Is that right, way? Right. Okay, That's sir. Thank right. you. On royalty, as of now, we don't think we'll be able to adjust this, make this adjustment, but still we are examining it. And if the treatment like says we are able to give, we will certainly do. Okay, so royalty being a state subject, I think it will be more tricky yeah, to yeah. actually implement. Yeah. Secondly, sir, uh, considering your uh, uh, production growth, especially on uh, gas as well as oil, uh, so uh, I mean, uh, since Bhagjan, the growth has been quite uh, remarkable, and uh, it is, uh, I think, we are bef- uh, we are above even pre-Bhagjan period volumes also. So, till now, which are the fields which have contributed to this growth? <coughs> The gas production is mostly con- contributed from the Bhagjan fields. So this is one field which is producing gas more. Then secondly, for oil, we have identified two major fields. One is Bali Mara, that is near Namro, and one is Lakwa Gao. These are the two fields which are giving constantly more and more oil. So we are expecting these two fields will be giving more oil. So last one year, these are the ones which are basically contributing to the growth which has come already to for the company, right? You are right. You are right. Okay. And uh, third question is that uh, your expenditure, I mean, with respect to uh, the provision as well as uh, certain sundry expenses, which has also gone up. I mean, compared to uh, what it used to be in the past. I mean, of course, uh, it has been a volatile, uh, volatile thing. But specifically asking about the provision, uh, there was a 400 crore provision. So, uh, what was this on uh, on about? And can we expect more such provisions coming up, or is this is this the end of it? 
Actually, you know, there was a CEO finance issue for the last few years, or for any term for that matter, so that provisions don't have a linear, are not linear throughout the year. Right. Whenever the wealth direction of provisions do happen, it, it, it so happened coincidentally that last year, the first quarter, we didn't have much of provisions, whereas this year, we have uh, higher provisions in the first quarter. And last last year, the third, third quarter, we had higher provisions. So, it, basically, if you see, look at the company's numbers, Provision on an annual basis works out around 650, 700 crores averagely on a year on an annual basis. Okay, so now in the first quarter, yes, we had an excess of 400 crores provision. That was because uh, we had a write up of a well write up amounted to around 270 crores, and another 144 crores we we took a provision for the NLP uh, where the PL had expired and the extension is expected. However. This has been taken as a matter of abundant precaution because we are really expecting the extension to come through in the next few months. Okay, so it can be there can be reversal as well on this line. Uh, we, uh, it is quite quite possible, yes. And two seventy crore was on which well? It was it was written up. Two seventy three well. This includes one well of uh, Bangladesh also, about 80 crores. 80, 80, 80, 80 crores Bangladesh well. And then two wells in the two northeast two wells. Two wells in notice, one well in Bangladesh, right? Yes. Okay. So just one last add up, uh, one last question. Actually, it's uh, related to your notes to account. So uh, I mean, the Supreme Court formed committee on uh, that Bagjan blast. So they've given this 1200 crore figure. You have stated that that mostly it has been covered. So is there any more, uh, uh, I mean, liability pending, or we are like fully sorted in terms of uh, Bagjan? See, if you if you talk about liability uh, in in the financials, the liability can only be taken in the financials whether it can when it can be reasonably uh, established. Now this figure has moved around uh, uh, all the time. It started off with a 2,000 crore figure. It it, it then when it said could go in excess of 2,000 crores, then it came down to uh, 1,200 odd. Now it's come to come to 950 odd. So we really don't know which way this is going. And this these are just numbers which are put up by. Uh, uh, individual. The court has not yet taken cognizance of these numbers or given any order based on these numbers. So these are just numbers which are floating around basically. Okay, the court has not given any order as such. No, no, not, no none whatsoever. Not even heard. Uh, Never been heard the case. Just a submission of a report which has not even been heard in the Supreme Court. So come. Okay, sir. Fair enough. Thank you so much and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samaya B from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, question with respect to NR. So, you had given the GRMs excluding uh, excess duty benefit. Uh, could you help us with the excess duty benefit this quarter and last quarter? GRM? What did you say? excess duty uh, I, I don't have the GRM. Sorry, it's earlier also this questions have been asked, but GRM total excise duty numbers are not there. But my one suggestion is uh, that for comparative performance of the refinery, if core GRM which matters, this is some additional benefit which the refinery is accruing or the northeast refineries are having. So if you are going to compare the numerical refineries' performance with other refineries, I think the core GRM that we are Declaring that is the right number to compare, and excess duty benefit. Each refinery, each company has certain concessions, duties, some VAT concessions. All these things are there, which is individual to each specific business or part of the business, depending on the sector or the location where it is established. So I don't think that is too much important. But still, based on the excess duty numbers of petrol and diesel, uh, I think annually the refinery has a in the total benefit of about 2,000 to 2,400 crores uh, annually on excise duty part, uh, based on the current excise duty. Got it. So just one clarification there. So uh, from Q4 to Q1, uh, because there was this excise duty revision, uh, you know, cut in month of May. So uh, on a quarterly basis between the two quarters, so the excise duty benefit directionally has it uh, reduced to that extent or? Naturally, if the excise duty has reduced from Q4 to Q1, the resultant effect has been factored into the financial results of the Maligal Refinery. Got you. 
Sir, a second thing on NRL, uh, uh, can you uh, provide an update on the expansion plans, uh, the timing, and uh, from, I mean, the funding perspective, the equity contribution from standalone, and uh, the timing of the cash flows? The expansion project is going on as per schedule. It's fully online and uh, expected to get completed by 20, end of 2025. And uh, uh, the, the medical refinery company has tied up a funding of about 19,000 crores from the consortium of banks. And uh, currently, the refinery, since it has good cash flows over the past few periods, so uh, it is utilizing the internal cash flows plus, plus some drawdown from the funding arrangements which has been tied up from the bank. So equity contribution right now in current financial year is not expected. Maybe next financial year after the <coughs> internal resources which are being generated into money the country, if they are uh, exhausted, after that only some equity contribution will come. But I think we have indicated earlier also as per the funding plan approved for this expansion project. Out of total 28,000 crore investment, about 3,000 crore will go from the all India's 70% equity issue. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, can you just help us out with the net debt number at NRL and uh, also our consult net debt? Could you just be the please? The net debt uh, at the end of the quarter at NRL and uh, also on a consult basis. Net debt. Uh, they have gone around 1400 crores. Okay. So we have gone around 1350 crore as of now against the total uh, funding uh, uh, tied up. So that is the only debt which the company has. And on consolidated basis, we, our, our total debt, I will just tell you, it must be around. Uh, 14,000 crores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14,500 yeah. personnel. Yeah. So about 15,000 crores must be our consolidated debt. In the meantime, we can tell you the final number. So, so this 15,000 crores is a gross number? Consolidated debt for the company, all India, including 70% share of NRL status. Okay, got it. Thank you. I'll join back with you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. The next question is from the line of Gazal Gupta from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot for taking my question. I just have uh, one question related to the subsidy. So I uh, just wanted to understand that uh, any idea that what will happen to the $40 subsidy, will it go to the uh, OMC? That's it from my side. Thank you. Uh, okay. If you are not able to understand, the question. can you repeat, please? Hello? Can you repeat the question? We could not understand. Uh, well, I wanted to understand the uh, subsidy uh, of $40, what is going to happen this year? Will it, is it going to go to the uh, ONC? Any uh, clarity on that? So what, there's no subsidy of $40? The, the SED will go to the consultant fund as it, as it goes in the excise duty. There is no subsidy. This is the special excise duty which has been debited by the government. So as any other taxation, this will go to the normal duty of the government of India. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Kanak Kumar Bucha from Bucha and Sun. Please go ahead. Uh, when will be the extract for the dividend? Sorry? X date of the dividend. You have not announced yet. No, we have not declared any dividend for the after the Q1 result. Okay. Fine, thank you. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. 
The next question is from the line of Kishan Mandra from Antique Research. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just one question from my end. Sir, regarding the capex that you plan to spend, can you please give the bifurcation between exploration and development uh, expenditure, please? Yeah, broadly about 60-65% goes into the uh, direct exploration and development activities. And about 15%, uh, you can also say that it's part of exploration development because that is all capital infrastructure that we invest, but we don't categorize this as exploration development expenditure. All infrastructure facilities, about 20% of the total uh, planned expenditure is that. And maybe around 15% goes on an average to the overseas and other investments. So 60-65% of the total expenditure, it goes directly into the exploration and development. In between exploration and development, would you be able to buy? Uh, you can say almost uh, 60, 40. Uh, well, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70% exploration, 30% development. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Spa Capital. Please go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Hello. Yes, yeah. you are audible. I request you to speak a bit louder. So this royalty computation, uh, uh, um, I mean, have you paid for the month of July yet, or you are going to pay uh, this? This will, I mean, just trying to understand the uh, workings again, as one of the previous participants also was also asking. Um, so, how do you compute royalty with the SES, without the SES? How does this seventeen thousand gets adjusted or not? If you could just give us some more, some more clarity on that. So, uh, royalty is calculated as, well as a rate as well as 20% of the crudel price. Uh, but, uh, but for royalty, post will get discussion is there. I'm sorry, I'm not. There is a lot of muffling of voice. I'm not able to properly hear you, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, now better, sir. Uh, we, we, uh, royalty is paid at the rate of 20% on the sales value. For crude oil. So, and 10% for natural gas. So we will not get any credit for the 17,000 that we are paying? No, we won't get any credit for it. There, there are some adjustments for the post value because which is a minor adjustment, actually. For this 17,000 cost that we had explained earlier also, about the 17,000, 17,750 duty, as of now, our understanding is that we will not be able to adjust it against the royalty payment. Royalty payment Have you made any... Is there any representations that you made and any, any response that you got till now from the government on this? We have not received any response, but the uh, representations certainly we have made to, look, to have a relook into this, uh, whatever windfall taxation structure which the government has debated. But uh, government, uh, as they had declared earlier also, they have reviewed it on a fortnightly basis. First review after 20 days, the second review after 14 days, it has happened already. So, hopefully, with the correction in the prices, this review will continue. Sir, apart from this cess, we also had a cess earlier to this. Uh, would that would there be some adjustments for that, or even for that, the, for that cess also, we'll have to pay uh, on gross realization? Yeah, we'll see. That cess will be uh, uh, on the adjusted price. Sorry, you're not audible, sir. The the sales that you, the OIDB says you're talking about, right? Yeah. You're talking about the OIDB says, is that not wrong? The question is related to OIDB says, is it? Whatever, that, as we made uh, clear, on royalty, there are two main levies on crude oil and natural gas. On crude oil, it is royalty and says. So this is special additional duty or the windfall tax which has been levied. We will not be able to adjust for royalty payment, but we will be able to adjust it for cess payment. So cess payment, suppose $100 fuel price minus $30 uh, or $25 this, $30 win for tax, on $70 only cess will be paid. Okay, got it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Jain from CLSA. Please go ahead. 
Vikas Jain from CLSA. Your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, thanks for taking my question. So, I mean, just a couple of things to round up. All the so what are the total one-offs? So this 270 crore, which has been mentioned, that is a part of provisions or that is a part of dry well exploration right now? Plus, uh, what is the forex loss? Any other provisions which are one-offs? Uh, could we could we just get that uh, rounded up number? The provision for 270 crores or is for the wealth. Another 144 crores, we have taken a provision for NWP penalty. These are the two main major figures, which make that four hundred crore figure. Okay. And forex loss, uh, what is the number? Forex loss has been there. Yes, about 200. About 200 crores. No? 200 crores, okay. And this is also sitting in other expenditure, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Harisha, yeah. just to get this clarification on SES, this is assessment of the company or have we got a clarification from the government also that a net off for SES will be allowed? We have got the clarification based on, the, on our assessment which has been validated by the tax expert consultant. Oh. It's been validated by the tax authorities. No, no, no. By our tax experts. Okay, by your tax experts. Okay, and based on that, I think the SES is paid every, you know, I, I think seven days after the month ends or something like yeah. that. So has that payment been made based on that only? Yeah, this, yeah, this month the payment is being made based on this, uh, in these calculations. Okay, and that you are reasonably confident. Royalty is something that you have relatively low confidence on. Absolutely right. Okay. Uh, anything else that, uh, you know, anything that we are given this action by the government, uh, it is uh, uncertain how, you know, uh, for, for a lot of us, this is to be read as the government not wanting to allow for any kind of, uh, you know, higher profitability measures for upstream. If that is really the right way to look at it, how are we looking at gas price a revision which is due in less than two months from now. You see, internationally, for the developing countries, uh, supernatural, supernatural profits on crude oil is not allowed to the, to the NOCs. This is not a uh, thing which is only prevalent in India, it is prevalent across developing countries. So some kind of funds are created uh, when, when, when crude oil prices hit above 100, 110, 120. So, Oh, no, no. Vikas, I'm sorry I am uh, interrupting our, our lady. We are a listed company, we are a public sector company, we have to abide by whatever the taxation structure the government provides. Now, there is a policy decision by the company, we have to follow that policy provision. Sir, I'm not even asking on that, I'm just asking what no, is I'm your... Not, you Vikas, please understand, we will not be able to give you any view why this has been done and all those no, I'm not asking on the view on the tax. I am. I am asking on the. Have we heard anything on the gas price as well? Is there? Gas price, we have not heard anything as of now. The formula stands. So as per the formula, as per the international prices which are factoring into that price, that formula, whatever uh, will be the price revision. To our understanding, as of now, there will be no change, and whatever prices are worked out, they will be implemented. But of course, okay. the government makes any policy decision, uh, we are not privy to that as a well. Sure, of course, of course. No, I was just understanding if, if, you, if there's any movement that we have seen to uh, no, kind of a, alter that. We don't, we are not aware of any such movement. Okay, and uh, as per, uh, you know, your best calculations, what is the kind of uh, prices that we are looking at? Is it much closer to $10 or 9 to $10 plus or? I think, Based on the formula. I think it will be difficult for us to make any mention at uh, uh, this conference call type of thing, futuristic projection. But uh, uh, the market, everybody knows that there is a, a, a rising trend, so price will be certainly higher. I think you all also must be estimating that better than us. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity uh, once again. So, so I just have a follow-up question on your, uh, I think, GST on service tax. So, uh, so your notes uh, to account suggest that the Assam government has agreed to this, uh, to this, uh, to this adjustment, right? But the Rajasthan government has not. Uh, is that the right, uh, right assessment? Actually, we have got a uh, stay from the Guwahati High Court regarding the already paid to the Assam government. Uh, uh, against any coercive action. The hearing on merit has not yet taken place. But this, uh, the same is also listed in the Rajasthan High Court, which has not yet come, come up for the hearing. Once it comes up for the hearing, on the same grounds, we are expecting the same kind of a ruling from the court. And, and uh, uh, this is not a state subject in any case. This is a central levy. So, uh, state government's agreement or non agreement is uh, not material or it is not in picture at all. Okay, okay, it's the high court which has actually put a stay, so you have, uh, yes. you have not, yes. Uh, yes. So you are not, yes. and I mean, Rajasthan, it will come basically for hearing, yes. and you are expecting same kind of a uh, decision there also, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind our participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nitin Tiwari from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Uh, just had a clarification question on uh, the calculation of royalty and sales. Uh, so, uh, so what's the what's the rate of uh, royalty and sales, and are both calculated on sale price? I mean, if you can just help me understand uh, on what uh, base this these calculations are done. So, if, correct me if I am wrong. I think both uh, rates are twenty percent. On sale price? So both, both are 20% on sale price. There are deductions available in both the cases. So already there is a deduction of post credit cost to the extent of 2800, uh, to, rupees 2800 for MT. In case of royalty, you set up the SCD and the NCCD. No, in case of sales, you set up the SCD and NCCD. All right. So basically, both rates are 20 percent, but there are certain deductions allowed in both cases uh, or cases. So then, so why is that happening? That given that both are calculated on the same price, and and in case of sales, you are allowed the deduction of uh, the extra levy that has happened. But in case of royalty, we we are not sure. So we can help us understand that difference and why that difference is coming. Uh, sir, sir, we appreciate your question. Actually, sir, both the levies are not collected under the same legislation. First, first point is that. They are not, both are not on the same side. Okay. Oh, okay. Sir, both are levies collected under different two different legislation. So that is why the calculation methodology also differs. First thing is that the sales which we are paying, that sales is collected as a duty of excise. So all the provisions of excise act are applicable for calculation of sales. So accordingly, uh -huh. some exceptions are allowed which we are doing. But as far as royalties concerned, royalties fail on oil field regulation and development act, where everything is specifically mentioned. So there is no scope for any alteration in the adjustment or in the calculation. So that is why some difference exists as far as calculation part is concerned. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Datta from Prabhudas Vilathar. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Sir, uh, sorry to, uh, I may miss the initial part. So, I just want some clarity on the NRL, EBITDA and GRM, sir. Just one moment. Just one moment. The NRL GRM is at six point fifteen dollars per barrel. Can you just repeat that number? Yeah. It is at six point fifteen dollars per barrel. Okay, and what is the EBITDA? EBITDA two thousand is about two thousand crores. Can you repeat that? Two thousand crores. Two thousand crores. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. 
The next question is from the line of Hamel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking the question. I just have a very quick uh, if you were to apply the windfall tax, which was is coming from July, but just just for calculation purposes on this quarter, how much would that quantum be in totality? Like, uh, would you be able able to give some understanding? The two cases is very very important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the two cases is very very important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the two cases is very important. Just a guesstimate if you take the last windfall tax. It will be really difficult because if you see the food prices now, they are doubling in $1995 range. And uh, from $120 when the decision was taken for 23, it is now $1995. Two corrections on fortnightly basis are already taking place. Basically, in a quarter, we are looking for six revisions in the duty structure. So unless uh, we... Uh, right, maybe sometimes in the month of September uh, we'll be able to give you some estimate because then we will know what is the structure in two months and what is the price trends in two months period. So as of now, it will be difficult for us to give you any quantum or the estimate. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. Oh, excuse me, my request would be since we are already for about an hour and we have some other scheduled meetings, can we have last two or three questions back to now? And then uh, we end. So we, sure. Actually, so we don't have anyone in queue, so we can close. In that case, possibly we can uh, close the call, Mr. Bharat okay. Sure. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vadarajan Shiva Shankaran for closing comments. Thank you, Margaret. I wish to thank all the participants for taking out time to join the call. And I wish to thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. Uh, Mr. Harish and the team, if you have any closing remarks, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you once again, Mr. Valitrajan and the, uh, your company, Antique Booking, for arranging this conference call on behalf of All India Limited. And I once again thank all the participants for the, uh, their participation, their interest in the company, and raising so many questions, making certain things. If hopefully, we have been able to clarify most of the things. In case any further questions, any queries, you can reach us, our uh, colleagues, uh, Mr. Sanjay Chaudhary, Mr. Krishampur, at any point of time, or to me also, and uh, we'll be able to, uh, very, very happy to, uh, satisfy all the queries of the investors. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much once again to all the participants and Antic. Thank you. On behalf of Antic Stop Broking Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.